Oh boy, wow. And this became a big thing. We're yeah. sitting in the audience and they're going to sing I'll Fly Away and I'm going, I can't believe that you don't know I'll Fly Away and I keep going until finally a woman reaches over and taps Mary Grace on the shoulder and she said, I'm from Ohio and even I have heard I'll Fly Away. Oh boy, yeah. I love it. Poor Mary Grace. Yeah, Mary Grace. She got it then. It's, in, yeah. it's embedded in her mind. She'll never forget it. Last week in your column in Dixie Divas, you were writing about Dee Dee, your good right. friend, and of course did we talk about this We yesterday. did yesterday. Why I just was another back? name. I'm not going back to that. No, it was a great <laughs> thing. We just highlight, and of course, folks can go online to MyrtleBeachHerald.com, our show sponsor. They can check that out and read a lot of Rhonda's columns. Uh, we're wearing our fancy jacket I see today. That. It's our, you see how we match. We do. I love your uh, necklace. We're in there. harmony. Yeah. We are. I'm going to have to tell uh, Emma Claire there. She yeah, helped me exactly. pick this tie out today. Well, tell her she did a good job. It's we're in a, harmony uh, here today. I will definitely let her know. That's sweet. You know, when we think about, are Southerners in general good storytellers, Rhonda? Yes, yes. Are they really? When, when the, uh, the Civil War started in 1860, 75% mm -hmm. of the Southeast was Celtic. And one of the strong marks of, Ke of the Celtics is strong storytelling. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they orally pass many of their stories down. The, uh, the Scotch are very much like that, the Scottish. Right, the Scottish. You have to say the Scottish when you're talking about the European. <laughs> But we are Scotch Irish in the Appalachians. Right. But they very much pass down uh, their stories through storytelling right. and and their music. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So very much, and that's the sign of our Celtic heritage. That's great. That's great. You know, there it is tough. We you talked yesterday about storytelling and storytelling for a lot of folks, they just can't think of something right. they tell a story about. And you see it in right. minutia. I mean, in in, in the, some of the smallest right. things. And, yeah, and you know, in just the smallest. This thing, I'll go, that's a story. That's a story, and it is. Uh, one of my great friends, Barbara Dooley, who's married to the former football coach, right. Vince Dooley, yes, at the University of Georgia. Barbara's a great storyteller. She just tells wonderful, wonderful stories. But she will say to me, because I run in their hometown paper, which is Athens, Georgia, I right. run on Sunday, and they will call me, she'll call me up and go, where do you come up with all these stories? And I say, listen, I've got a story of 12, I've got a list of 12 and 15 stories I haven't gotten you haven't to. Even started. Yeah, oh, yeah. you know, I, I went to a Gone with the Wind auction not long ago about, really? with Mary Grace. Oh, yeah. And uh, I bought a great piece of Gone with the Wind memorabilia that I put into my kitchen. That's been on my list forever to write because what it was, I needed something. I have a French country kitchen. Right. And uh, the auction was hosted by the last surviving male member of the movie, really? Fred C Crane, who played right. one of the Tarleton twins. And he had a French movie poster of Gone with the Wind from 1940. Really? Oh, this boy. Big. It's very big. And it was perfect. And I bought it at auction. So I've been meaning to do a column about that and haven't gotten to it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you do have a, a litany of things just bottled up, Ron. Right. We can't wait. Of course, all of our readers are dying to see those. You know, when you think about both folks you've written about, folks you think about, obviously folks who were here last week heard you talk about a mayor in the small town. Right. On there, of which you wrote about, to the town that came according. But are there are there folks you think you'd like to write about, but you just can't do it, or are there people that um, that you want to make sure? Um, I mean, are, are there things that you want to write about, but you just have trouble putting pen to paper? Well, I'll tell you one person I've been trying to get for a long time is Kenny Stabler. Stabler lives in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, grew up in Foley, Alabama. Right. And he is just a redneck kind of guy. He admits. I mean, we exchange emails all the time, but I can't right. ever pin him down for an interview. Right. But I think that Kenny Stabler, who came from that great era of the 60s of the Bear Bryant teams, and uh, just a good old boy, mm -hmm. I think he's perfect for my column and yeah. I think that's why I have a lot of male readers I, I really wrote developed this column for women yeah. but I probably have in some of my markets I have a 40% male oh, share oh come on oh, yeah. and you know that because they that. email you they oh, call yeah, you they I track have, you down uh, they show Athens, up and talk Athens Georgia is one yeah. of those I have a huge male following there Athens the home of University of Georgia exactly, wow. exactly. And, I, and last Thursday when I was here for the chamber right. event yeah. I had three or four guys come up to me and say you are the first thing I read in the Herald. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. So and we so have Mary Edie was right? here, yeah. and I think she took names, so she can tell you I'm not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those. I want to get those. That's yeah. great. But 
um, you know, I tell stories like I'll tell NASCAR stories. Right. I tell good old boy stories. Mm -hmm. I don't mill bash. I never do that. You know, I, I, I take a female look on men in a funny way, mm -hmm. the difference of us. But I don't beat up on men. You know, I don't like for women to do that. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, maybe other women like it, but I don't like it. I don't think it's becoming. It's mm -hmm. not my style, so I don't do that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'll see something that's funny about men, and I turn it, and even they can laugh at themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think it's stories like Kenny Stabler that, right. that bring men to my column. That's and great. that is one story I want to do because I think he's a great Southern story to tell. That's great. And, I, and every once in a while I email him back and say, hey, are you going to do this? He said, hey, <laughs> I drive a pickup truck and I carry a pocket knife because he knows I write about right. this stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I haven't pinned him down yet. That's great. That's great, Rhonda. we got about five minutes. You know, you think about aspects and as you travel around, do you ever get nervous when you're going out to talk to groups. Are there any groups you talked I, recently about a group of 500 where the person who lined you up, 500 guys, the person who lined you up was worried that maybe you wouldn't connect with guys. Right, Are there ever yeah. instances that you get a little nervous yeah, going really, on stage? The only time that happened was I did an event in West Virginia at a big resort there right. and it was for automotive engineers right. and also on the program for them were Rudy Giuliani and Bill Clinton. No way. And oh, they boy. have brought me, this has been about two or three years ago, and I was so nervous because, you know, I, I thought these are people from all over, wow. really the world, because they brought German engineers oh, yeah, sure. in. And I just thought, I, you know, I'm a lightweight compared to connect. these guys. Yeah. They're going to talk serious and academic. Uh, yeah. and, you know, and I'm just telling these stories of life in the South. So I got stand innovation. It was one of the best oh, wow, audience Rhonda. I did. But I did a lot of praying in my room before I went down Is to that right? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I did. And that's I pray before every event I do. You really? Good. I really do. I did before I went down to do the Myrtle Beach event. Right. You know, I just, uh, I want to be good. I want people to be entertained. Uh, and I just want it to be a, an experience that people walk away and very hopefully. Right. I'll tell a story that inspires them. Right. And if somebody walks away, you know, at Myrtle Beach last right. week, sure. I Don't did the Daryl Waldrop story, yeah. went in the Daytona 500, and I looked through the audience and saw two or three people dabbing their eyes. Right. Yeah. Because everybody knows what it feels like to follow a great dream that looks unobtainable. Right. And I want them to walk away. And I had several people, I had three or four people come up and say, you touched me today That's because right. I'm at this point. I had a politician in Mississippi uh, right before I came to Myrtle Beach, mm -hmm. or he was running for a big position right. against an incumbent. And he came up to me after the event and he said, you don't know what a difference you've made in my life. Today. Really, Rhonda? So that's what you hope is that you encourage right. people. I saw that uh, from the woman sitting next to me at last Thursday's talk, even though I was in the back of the uh -huh. room. In the back, all the way in the I was back. all the way in the back. The woman on my right was actually all the way in the back as well. And she was nodding your head as you were saying, don't give up your great story about Daryl Walter, which is very powerful. And a lot of folks will see that if they pick up my life in the pits and get into that. They'll also see the thrilling tale, which I think you mentioned will be turned into a movie, The Town That Came According, which is hilarious. But, you know, when, when you think about yourself, do you ever dig deep into yourself, Ron? You talked about obviously connecting with God and, and praying right. on a regular basis. Has God, God's been a part of your life for a long time. Absolutely. Yeah, so your father was a Baptist, was a Baptist preacher. Yeah. He was. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so my faith in who I am uh, is so important. Right. You know, and uh, it, it's important to the people from which I come, the Scotch-Irish, the poor Scotch-Irish of the Appalachians, who never prayed for more than what they needed. And they prayed for what they needed. And that what they needed were crops to come in so they could pay the taxes on their farm. My sister and brother and I owned the farm that my grandfather uh, basically had to sell moonshine to keep to pay the taxes on. And I would never sell my part of that farm because it's such an important part of who we are and from where we come, from people who truly struggle just to stay alive. Mm, Rhonda, you're working on a new book now. Yes. Are you, are, is it still in you? Is it something you're letting out? Do folks know what you're working on? Do you ever let people know? Is it a fiction? Well, or well a... I just one thing I just finished is a Christmas novella that oh, I had. Right. Yeah, I have just finished that. Uh, just a simple little tale of an Appalachian Christmas in 1933 wow. and a moment of love and kindness that goes forward to touch millions of lives from that moment forward. Right. 
How do you slow down, Rhonda? I don't. What do you do to slow down? We're I talking don't. about well, weekly column. Well, one thing I don't yeah. do is call you. Right. Because no. if I ever call you, oh. I'm more nervous when I hang up the oh, phone. Oh, give me a break. Going, That's crazy. I no, I don't talk and about you. I was going, I thought my life was bad. You, I'm not you calling you again. You are amazing. I mean, I, don't, I literally don't know how you do everything with a column, with writing, having penned four books and were, just wrapped up your fifth, obviously speaking all over the country and really having opportunities all over the world more than 100 times a year. I don't know how you do it. I think that I th what I've discovered is that the most important virtue that we can possess in this life, and I, and I think there's not a virtue that's not important, but to me, the most important one is humility, because we realize that um, you know, there, there's a greater power that gives us opportunity, that gives us talent, that gives us ability. And uh, I'm very, you know, it's just hard work. And there again, it comes from my Scotch-Irish heritage of people who just work hard red Georgia clay that they could barely farm and make a living out of. And I feel so blessed uh, that I never want to let an opportunity get by. Just whatever it is, I just want to work hard. And that's one of my great inheritances from my people is that strong work ethic. You heard her say it from my You've people. You've got it. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, Rhonda, for Thank being with you. us this morning. Very definitely. Thank you. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Rhonda Rich yes. coming up next. What great words. A good story can be found in the simplest of circumstances. In the simplest of circumstances, those simple steps down the hallway as Rhonda and Mary were walking into the conference room, the opportunity for me to get associated with Rhonda and the amazing partnership that she's had with the Herald for the last three years, connecting with all of our readers here in the area. Go online to MyrtleBeachHerald.com. Take a look at some of her recent columns. Or go online to whatsouthernwomenknow.com, whatsouthernwomenknow.com. Check her out, an amazing woman.